Welcome to Customer Service Academy Radio with author and customer experience expert, Tony Johnson. Tony will share his vision for successful customer service, leadership, and business excellence, and speak to some of the most impactful leaders in business today. And now, here's Tony Johnson. Hello, everybody. Customer Service Academy is on the air. I'm Tony Johnson, your customer experience speaker, consultant, and trainer. And today's episode is coming to you courtesy of Ignite Your Service Training and Consulting and Forexi Global Consulting and Solutions. Truly better together. Folks, my amazing course of Six Cannons of Customer Service is out there for you right now to really help you launch your leadership, your customer experience, your employee engagement, and your business results. Head on over to igniteyourservice.com learning to learn more about that great program, sign up, and invest in yourself today. Folks, I was looking back through my memories, Facebook, photographs, things like that, and I realized as I was looking through there, it has been exactly one year since I left the hospital from my whirlwind two weeks in there with thoracic surgery, the whole bit, and, and headed home to start my recovery. I, I cannot believe it's been a year. As, as I look back on, on some of the blogs I wrote back then, as I look back on the podcasts I recorded coming out of that, as I reconnected with clients after basically going two weeks dark in the hospital, you know, having that thoracic surgery and, and really one of the most painful and impactful moments of my life, and, and really looking back on that and, and thinking, gosh, what a difference a year makes. You know, since then, have you know taken a trip to India? Have been all over you know the United States and, and and other countries. You know teaching customer experience, doing keynote speeches, helping my great clients with consulting and, and and business opportunities. And it has been an amazing year, and I'm so very grateful. But when you look back, it is it is amazing how quickly a year can go by. As I continue to be thankful to Lakeland Regional Hospital and and to Watson Clinic and all the folks here in Lakeland and and, and the great doctors and nurses who took care of me. Still, you know to this day, so very grateful to friends and family and clients and everybody who had my back during that time. But, you know, it's a reminder how important healthcare is and how important it is that we do the things to take care of ourselves, that we, we prioritize that work-life integration. Sometimes balance is tough, but integration is possible. And looking at ways to make sure that we're, we're watching out for our health. Because it's one of those things that until it happens to you, until it, until it smacks you right in the head, you, you don't think about it as much as you should. But I will tell you what, it has been something that was totally life-changing for me. And, and continuing to think about the future of healthcare, the future of empathetic patient services, and really looking forward to some of the great engagements coming up in the healthcare space. Stay tuned for some of the blogs and programs you're going to see coming out around the patient experience because it has been a year in the making with all of these great things that are going to be coming out based on my time and my adventures and experiences in the healthcare system. But with that in the rearview mirror, let's talk about Labor Day. Labor Day originated in, really in, in the late 19th century. It was all about labor movement efforts to recognize the contribution of the American worker. The first Labor Day was celebrated in 1882, and it was organized by the Central Labor Union. Now, it's become a federal holiday. It became so in 1894, and, and really it came about from the Pullman strike, some nationwide labor pieces, and it's highlighting the need for improved working conditions, fair labor practices, all of those things. It's a great opportunity every year, and in fact every day, to stand up and really celebrate and appreciate the contributions of the workforce. Everyone makes a difference out there. Everyone has, has a job to do. Everyone goes to work and contributes to how we get things done. And this is a great time to take that step back, to take that breath, and, and understand those contributions, appreciate those contributions, to celebrate those contributions. Because let's face it, without a workforce, we are absolutely nowhere. So it's a great chance to do that. So as we think about coming in on this great Labor Day holiday, I think it's a great time to think about what we can learn. These, these holidays, these remembrances, they're always great opportunities to think about you know, what we can take away from it. Because that's really, as leaders, what we really have to always consider. And, and first, the first thing to really think about is we have to remember that the team experience will always drive the customer or guest experience, and that's going to drive business results. So if you're looking for that sustainable, profitable growth machine, it always begins with how well you take care of your team, how well you develop your leaders, how well you prioritize the employee experience, because that is going to be a key driver for everything that comes after. Productivity, quality, service, experience, the whole kit and caboodle all comes back to that. So we think about this as, as a way to really learn and really ad adopt these amazing practices. Let's talk about the top 10 things we can learn, take away, and do from this Labor Day. So the first, as I said, value your team. Labor Day reminds us of the importance of recognizing and valuing the contributions of workers. So as a leader, we have to continuously acknowledge and appreciate the hard work and dedication of those. It, it comes down to understanding that without them, 
we're nowhere. Without them, we're nothing. Without a great workforce, without a great team, we really can't get it done every single day. So that's going to be the first thing you have to do is you have to understand the importance of building that fantastic team, of valuing them, and then making sure that they know that you value them. The second piece is around this idea of work-life balance or work-life integration. Now, I keep coming back to, I think I've mentioned it before, Jack Welch said in his great book, Winning, that sometimes work-life balance is kind of a myth, right? It's really more about how do you integrate all the pieces of your life together in a way that really can be satisfactory for you, that you can enjoy and that you can you can really celebrate. So it, it may be balance or it may just be getting everything to fit together in a compelling way so that you can do the things you want to do and enjoy them and really appreciate and enjoy your life. So it's about making things fit together in the right way. Now, Labor Day was a huge deal around emphasizing the, you know, the need for quality working conditions, and that includes this work-life balance integration piece. So that's a key takeaway from here. It's a great chance for us to kind of double down and think about that. So encouraging that healthy balance for your team. This is a way to prevent burnout. You know, we're hearing so much around really the quest for better mental health, around the quest for, you know, having, having that ability to take time off, having that ability to really balance, you know, morale and productivity. There are kind of two ends of the spectrum there and making sure that they all work together. And, and this comes back to ensuring that the team can take their time off. You know, do you have those processes that allow them to take time off? Can they really unplug when they leave work for the day? You know, can you minimize the amount that they have to, you know, whether dial back in, check email, answer phone calls, you know, all of those kind of things. And, and, and let me just say this. We should always be paying those who punch a clock, those who are hourly, should always get paid if they're doing anything outside of the workday. You have to make sure you do that. On the salaried side, it's really easy to abuse those team members, right? It's really it's really easy to adopt the mindset of, well, they're salaried, so they're on, on the clock 24 hours a day. Well, no, you know, there, there's always gonna be a need uh, to balance both sides of this, right? If you think you're gonna leave the workday every single day as a salaried employee and not ever get pulled back into a little bit of nonsense here or there in the evening or weekend, you're probably fooling yourself. But also, if you're an employer and you're thinking to yourself, well, I own them 24 hours a day, you are also equally wrong. You know, it's about this idea of balance. It's about understanding that folks need to be able to unplug, they need to be able to take their weekends, need to be able to take their vacations, need to be able to prioritize getting to the doctor and the dentist and, and all of those kind of things, and at the same time, being able to fulfill their work obligations. So it is a balancing act there, but it is, again, a two-way street where both folks have to be kind of in sync on the dance floor. The third is prioritizing fair treatment and respect. So if you think about it, Labor Day, it is all about thinking about this idea of, of wages, reasonable hours, safe working conditions. You know, these are the things that really were a really big deal. And, and I would tell you, I had a dad and a mom who both did, you know, over 20 years in, in a factory setting. And, and this was, was super important to them that they had a safe working environment because when you're working in some kind of factory environment, it's really easy to get hurt. It's really easy to end up being off work for 30 or 60 days because you hurt yourself when you've got big machines running and assembly lines and all kinds of stuff moving around. So prioritizing that idea of, of, of safety is really important. But, but thinking about how do you ensure as a leader that you've got this fair and equitable treatment of folks, that you're ensuring safety in the workplace, that you're just flat out being fair. You know, this is one thing I hear so often from employees when, when I'm out, you know, touring around the country and, and doing training sessions. As I talk and tour and, and do listening tours and things like that, and focus groups, I hear a lot this idea of, of, of wanting more balanced, fair, and equitable treatment. Now, of course, there's always this, this you know, this, this ax to grind that some folks have. So you have to take things with a grain of salt. But there is, you know, in some cases, some truth to this. So you really should make sure you ask yourself, Am I, am I being fair to each one of my employees? Am I taking the time to get to know each one of them? Am I giving everybody the same opportunities to learn and grow? Am I coaching everybody in the same way and finding ways for folks to take those next steps? And am I doing it in a way that makes everybody feel like they've got, you know, kind of got a shot, right? Because there's nothing worse for employee morale than if folks think there's a boss that plays favorites. So if you think there's any chance that there's that perception, go out there and tackle that because that's a real morale killer. The fourth empowering employees to make decisions. Now, this is all about Labor Day. Folks having a voice, being heard, and, and really having that opportunity to share what they think. And as a leader, you really have to make sure that you are you're empowering your team, that they have decision rights, that they can 
watch their corner of the store, that they can own what they do, and that you're not going to be there micromanaging them every single day. Because there's, they're, again, a morale killer. If you really want to think about a way to, to, to kill morale, take a high-performing employee and then micromanage them and watch them just bolt for the door. They will not love that. So think about how you're empowering your team to make decisions. Because you know it, it is really a great thing if you can get that sense of empowerment out there in your workplace. First of all, you won't have to be there for every decision. Second of all, Guests, customers, consumers, you know, they won't have to wait for someone to go, quote unquote, get a manager to make a decision. If you've got a team that you have coached, that you've worked with, that you've trained, you've instilled in them that pride and they feel comfortable making decisions. You kind of worked with them on a decision tree, kind of gamed some stuff out, role played some things, and then allowed them to go out and test their test their legs, if you will. That true sense of empowerment will just lift the entire team up. The next piece, champion continuous improvement. So when you think about this idea of Labor Day, it's really talking about, you know, kind of the quest for better, you know, just better in general. And and as a leader, if you think about how can you strive for ongoing improvement in processes and and upskilling and workplace conditions, all really important. It comes back to safety again there, by the way. But if you think about this idea of getting better every day, this idea of listening to what the team has to say, of, of listening to your guest feedback, of sharing all of that openly, and coming together as a team to say, okay, we've got this feedback, we, we, we've got these ideas, we, we've got this data. How do we use this data to drive decision making? And how do we take what we're hearing from both the team members and the, then the customers to really continue to dial in product, service, brand, the whole bit, so you can continue to drive that loyalty? Creating a welcoming workplace where people want to be. That's, that's the next one. That's number six on the list. You know, this was a, was a huge thing for, for teams, was, was to have a, a place that they could come to work and feel like they belonged, that they felt that sense of belonging. Because people want to be places where they feel like they belong. And when you, when you think about that, you know, it is this idea of, 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 of this inclusion piece, of everyone understanding how they fit in to the, to the overall puzzle of work, of them knowing that they have a place and that they're valued, and that they have the opportunity to contribute in meaningful ways. You know, it's it's this idea that folks come to work and they see themselves in the work, they see their place in, in the overall dynamic, they understand how they contribute, not just as a large workforce, but as an individual. Because that's a really powerful way, particularly if you're talking about your, your younger millennials and, and your Gen Zs, is so very important that they understand the why and that they understand how they contribute. And I will tell you, Gen Alpha is going to be exactly the same way. They're not they're not in the workforce yet, but as they come closer and closer to potentially getting those work permits, you're going to see them come into the workforce and really want to understand what their place is, how they contribute, and why. It's going to be super important. Seventh, think about it as a leader if you're leading with empathy. You know, think about the fact that there have always been struggles and triumphs in the workforce. Folks come to work every single day and there's trials and tribulations, right? There's there's this whole idea of, of folks wanting to do a great job, but sometimes work is challenging. Sometimes folks have to, to put in the extra hours. There's a lot that goes on when you think about the fact that, th- that there can be struggles and triumphs ar- around the daily workday and when you think back to just the history of labor in general. So as a leader, if you can approach your leadership with an empathetic lens, and remember, empathy is about understanding, not about agreement. But if you can put yourself in the place of your team, if you can understand where they're coming from, if you can understand their journey as an employee from, you know, what does it mean to find your organization, to interview, to onboard, to train and become a part of it, and then to settle into the organization and become a contributing part of it. And then from there, what does that look like to continue to, to develop and to grow and to learn and to upskill and, and to become better, faster, smarter, if you will? What does that mean? And if you can understand what that means to be a team member, well, I'll tell you what, you can find ways to knock friction and obstacles out of their way and just supercharge the amount that your team can get done and their advocacy and loyalty back to the organization. Because remember, everything we're talking about today is going to be a retention builder. Encouraging an open dialogue and feedback. You know, so often many of the things over the course of, of history and labor has has been fueled by the fact that management wasn't listening, that the business wasn't listening. Nothing good happens when the team thinks, eh, it's just not worth it because nobody's listening to what I have to say. And that's a modern problem and it's a historic problem. It's something that, that continues to be an issue. This is why things like pre-shift huddles and listening tours and having these, these regular check-in meetings with team members are so very important because 
you know, as a leader, if you can just really foster this culture of, of transparency, of open communication, where people feel completely comfortable walking in and saying, hey, I don't understand, or hey, I have an idea, or hey, have you thought of, or hey, this is bumming me out. If you can have that culture where folks feel comfortable coming to you and having those conversations, that's a powerful way to get them really engaged. And then as a leader, if you can go solve those problems, if you can help them get to the finish line on that, help really knock out some of those obstacles for them, smooth out the friction, if you will, that's another way to gain loyalty within your employee base, to have them be more productive, and again, a way to keep them around longer. Because you know it is, it is going to be a non-starter. If you think anything we're talking about today or anything you can do is going to you know, fuel that 25-year employee again, ship sailed, right? But what we can do is encourage folks to stick around as long as we can, to have your most talented team members want to stay in that role as long as possible and then continue to grow and learn and stay with the organization in different capacities. That's what we're really hoping for here. But to stick Bob or Francine in a role and have them do that role for 20 years, not going to happen. But this will help you again keep your best people around for as long as possible and keep them engaged. The next piece, and we've been kind of nibbling around the edges here, number nine, Investing in professional development. You know, this has been a huge part of of kind of employee requests and demands over the years when we think about from the labor standpoint, has always been this idea of training, of education, of upskilling, of development. That's a huge part of, of what they've been looking for. So, you know, as a leader, these opportunities to learn, to develop, to grow, to know that there is a career progression. This is the path. This is the journey. This is what you need to do. These are the classes you need to take. These are the training events that need to happen. This is how we know you're ready for the next step. All of those things, they can see a path into the future and and they see where they could go, they see the progression, they know what they need to do and it's crystal clear. It's a great way to keep team members engaged into the future. And I will tell you, a huge part of what we do here, thinking about these these sessions we hold, we come into people's workplaces and, and hold these great leadership development workshops. We come in and do employee skills training on brand, on career progression, on customer experience training. Those events are all about making team members you know, faster, smarter, better, and getting ready to take that next step, particularly some of the really great one, two, and three-day leadership workshops we do both in business and as, as one-off training events. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure to shoot me a note because we, we really specialize in doing those training events. And then finally, number 10, the last one, celebrate achievements and recognize milestones. You know, that is something that team members have said for generations. You never tell me when I do anything good. You never celebrate me. And it continues to be a problem in the workplace today. So continue to think about as a leader, how are you going to celebrate successes? How are you going to recognize folks? What does your recognition program look like? And then thinking about how are you going to celebrate milestones, birthdays, anniversaries, things like that, you know, sales, wins, all of those things. How are you going to celebrate them all in kind of a cohesive package? How can you gamify these pieces to really maybe look at ways to bring in technology to, to have you know gamified experiences where people can really earn points or things like that toward a larger goal? How can you make it a, a, a community event where people can recognize each other? And how can you not, not wait for the big ticket event, right? It, it's, it's about looking for ways every day to celebrate everyday excellence. People love that stuff, and it's a great way for your team to know that even the small daily wins are really important to really building a brand and, and delighting customers every day. So folks, if you're enjoying the podcast today, and I sure hope you are, make sure that you scroll on down, leave five stars, say something nice, share it with your friends, subscribe. That's how we keep Customer Service Academy one of the top podcasts on customer service in the world. So thank you for that, and and please continue to help us out with that. So when we bring everything back together today, truly comes back to people, comes back to empathy, comes back to taking the time and force of will to do the things we know. We all know we should recognize our teams. We all know we should empower them. We know that we should take the time to communicate well with them and have our daily lineups and and pre-shift huddles. We know we need to do those things every day. We know we need to find out what's hassling our team members and knock that nonsense out of their way. We know we have to look at ways that we can continue to develop them into the future so that they're going to want to stay and grow. We know those things matter. We all know that. But thinking about how you can really prioritize that every day, how are you going to take action on that? That's really the key takeaway. That's what's going to set you apart because everybody knows these things, but the very best leaders find ways every single day to integrate them into their daily leadership. They don't let them get pushed off their calendar just because the day is hard, you know, or there were call-offs or something went wrong. They, They continue 
to have their meetings with their team. They continue to recognize and celebrate. They continue to communicate well. And that's what sets apart leaders who are really worth the follow, if you will. Leaders who have team members who stick around and that have those high levels of retention and engagement from those who don't. So remember, take that time every single day to keep your people kind of right there in the center and have those moments where you can get to know them and ensure that they're feeling really good about what they're doing every day. So folks, that is our show. Remember, we are still in the middle of the great service comeback. Everything we talked about today continues to come back to people and how you can set yourself apart in the marketplace to keep the best people and really engage and and build loyalty with your customer base. Until next time, I've been Tony Johnson, your customer experience strategist and trainer, reminding you to keep your customers and your employees at the center of everything you do, because that's where the most amazing things are possible. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will talk to you next week. This has been Customer Service Academy Radio with Tony Johnson. Tony is available to speak at your event, meeting, or workshop. Have a powerful customer-focused day.